Handle Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents New England's favorite bowling show. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And now your hosts, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hello again, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, week two of mixed doubles. Last week, a very close match decided by just four pins. Yeah, it was, it was never more than probably 15 pins apart for the entire course of the match. Steve Batty had a couple of, he'll be the first to admit, lucky breaks toward the end, and that made the difference with a four-pin victory. You make your own luck in this you game do. sometimes. Blanca Gacharna and Steve Batty defeating Robin Porter and Dean Gardner, 336 to 332, sets up this afternoon's match against Joanne Rosano and Rich Clark. Let's meet our competitors first. Last week's winner, our number five seed, Blanca Gacharna from Chelsea and Steve Badney from Claremont. All right, Blanca coming in with an average of 100. Her high single is 152. High triple is 352, and she bowls at Central Park Lanes in East Boston. And for Steve Badney, his average 128. High single 197. High triple is 488. Bowls at Sunset Lanes in Newport, New Hampshire. And in addition to winning the match last week, they won $50 in bonus money and $50 for having the high string in the match. They take on our number three seeded team, Joanne Rosano from Weymouth and Rich Clark from Bedford, New Hampshire. With 23 titles in the WCBC, she is the winning as pro bowler in history average 118 high single 181 high triple is 455 bowls in a number of places viking wreck alley cat and kingston park place lanes as well and rich clark 129 average high single 195 triple 473 and he does his bowling right here at Lita Lane. And they rolled a combined 1239 in the roll off to earn the number three seed. Let's get right to it. Mixed doubles competition is coming up from Lita Lanes in Nashua when we continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Well, we began with five teams in our mixed doubles competition, and last week, the fourth-seeded team of Robin Porter and Dean Gardner eliminated by Blanca Gacharna and Steve Vadney. That sets up this afternoon's match with Joanne Rosano and Rich Clark with the two higher-seeded teams, Cindy Colley and Mike Morgan and Debbie Scandal and Chris Sargent waiting in the wings, and it will be Steve Vadney first to bowl here this afternoon at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Happy to have you with us. Thanks for joining us on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. <laughs> Veteran Steve Badney from Claremont, New Hampshire. Pulling out of Sunset Lane in Newport. Will he make it? No, oh, almost. And that will be a nine box with Steve starting out. Steve made a couple of big shots late in the third string last week to lift his team to victory. Bringing them from behind. a good first ball and will it will they all go they surround the seven pin but the seven pin refuses to topple it looks like triple wood in front of the seven pin had has okay. to go down you could make this shot Mike thanks for your confidence seven Dick. out of ten times you would have made <laughs> seven that out shot. of ten yeah. well with our grudge match coming up in just it a couple of months up, isn't it, huh? it is sneaking up on us I'll be making shots like that better than seven in your out of ten dreams times. in your dreams Rich Clark from Bedford starts off with a pocket shot. Haven't seen Rich in a while. It's been since, uh, wow, 1999 when he bowled in the Tournament of Champions. And he'll begin with a spare, he and Joanne Rosano. Great team on paper, that's for sure. Between the two of them, probably 100 times on TV as well. Another head pin shot. So he'll put nine in the mark. Should point out the, the men are starting this match. They'll bowl six out of the ten boxes. The next game, the women will start and bowl six out of ten. And then in the third game, the bowlers will decide amongst them in each team on who will bowl the most boxes by starting. So that's how the format works with mixed doubles. And he has to settle for a ten box. He'd like to have it back. Yeah. 
It was Blanca Gacharna, the veteran of now one television appearance under her belt, and it was a winning effort with Steve Badney last week by four pins. That one's off the head pin for Blanca. She made a couple of big shots in her TV debut last week. Some terrific had to spares. make her feel a little bit more comfortable. Blanca from Chelsea, bowling out of Central Park in East Boston. During the course of the match, again, we'll read some of the cards and letters and emails that have been sent to us. And that will be a, what will it be? An eight box for Blanca. Thirty in the third frame for Blanca and Steve, and she'll take her second shot now in lane 33. And hit the head pin. That's a good first ball. Trying to kick out that seven pin. Got wood in front of it. Set up nicely. Much larger target than uh, you normally would have. Just want to keep it out of the gutter. That's the key. Uh oh. It's a disappointing uh, missed opportunity for uh, Blanca Gacharna. I think she was probably focusing on not going in the gutter and went too far to the right. And she'll settle for a nine box. I mentioned last week we had an, an email about uh, the old candle pinch for cash program on Channel 7, which way back in the 70s or 80s, whenever, in the early 80s, I guess it was. And this email sent by uh, Rob T. of Methuen. In the early 80s, right about the time Channel 25 was launched, one of the first shows that was on the network was Candlepins for Cash. They relaunched the show with Rico Petroselli as the host. Don't remember that when Rico did the show. They, they used lanes out of Waltham. The show lasted a couple of years. The original Candlepins for Cash used a set of lanes that they had set up in the parking garage under the Channel 7 studios in Government Center. I don't mm. remember that either. And that's uh, passed along from Rob T. of Methuen. And a question from Mike Morin. Are you still playing softball? I remember you used to pitch for the WCGY softball team. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes, I did. And our WZID team also has a softball activity and still up there on the mound. Joanne Rosano missed it. Hey, and that'll be an eight box for Joanne. Joanne, a veteran. One of the best women bowlers in the world. Well, in 23 of titles, the winningest titles. bowler yep. in WCBC history. That's a good first ball right there. Crossed over to the Brooklyn side. Can she break up the split? Joanne is very deliberate in her approach. Before we leave the air today, we will show you a plaque that uh, replicates the highest official sanctioned single string in Candlepin Bowling history, deck 245. Remarkable, isn't it? Joanne, will she make it? No, she gave it a good run. It was uh, rolled by Ralph Sem, S-E-M-B, known out in the western part of the state. As a proprietor and a professional bowler, he had, Dick, the first six strikes in a row. Unbelievable. Stunning. Stunning. Mm -hmm. And Joanne will get the 10 box. So it's an eight pin lead for the team of Joanne Rosano and Rich Clark over Steve Vadney and Blanca. Blanca Gacharna, Steve Vadney missed the head pin. If you'd like to get in touch with us, if you'd like to find out more about what's going on at the TV station, WNDSTV.com. Here's the website for you to look at. And all the links that are available to you right through that website. And our email address is bowling at WNDS.com. We'd love to hear from you with an email, a letter, a, a note of so any sort. Always enjoy reading and hearing from our viewers. There's a spread eagle for Steve. Here's another kingpin explanation. We had a couple last week that we talked about in response to a question that was raised a few weeks ago about the origin of the term kingpin for the number five pin. 
A couple of interesting explanations last week. Soldiers guarded their king, and the king was always in the middle of the troops, protected the, the king in the middle, and the five pin is surrounded by all of the other pins, and that's why it's the king pin, and there's Rich Clark leaving the 7-10. He threw a great ball, and the 7 and the 10 pin still stand. Almost made it. The ball almost came back to take down the 10 pin, and it would have counted. So Rich will settle for a 10 box. Bob Barzillay from Bridgewater, Massachusetts. In regards to the question about where did the name Kingpin come from when describing the 5 pin, I offer this explanation. My thoughts are that the name was derived from the game of chess and how the king is surrounded by the other pieces of the game to protect him. That's an interesting thought. I don't know if it's related to the original derivation, but it might be. Here's Rich Clark with a nice shot. And also, we'll recall that Bob Barsley, we had photos, or there were photos of his that were put up on candlepincorner.com of old bowling pins that he bought up in Maine a while back. We had them uh, oh, a month or so ago on the show. He paid $5 a piece for the antique bowling pins at the antique shop in Maine. And, uh, and he also applauds us for pronouncing his name correctly. Bob Barzillay from Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Bob, thanks very much for your note. Here's B. Oh, nice try. I gave it a shot. Some of the women that didn't make today's show, because only five can, include Sue Halloran, who works here at uh, Lita Lane's Lois Queen, and other names that you would know. Include Deb Regan, who seems to make the show every year, although did not this time around. She ended up in 12th. Johnny Brown, who has been on the show in past years. Colleen Montplaser has uh, also made the top 16. Iris Libertini, who's here today. She was her, yeah. uh, 26th. So only five bowlers could make it. And look Great at this. Great ball by Blanca Gacharna for a strike. Perfect ball. Strike in the eighth frame. Watch it again. She threw a great ball that time and had great action. The nine pin was the last to go. Now Joanne Rosano working on a strike left by, uh, spare rather left by Rich Clark on lane 34. Joanne right through the middle of spread eagle puts just four in the mark. I want to mention some of the men that uh, did not make the cut today as like the women only five can Bruno DeFeo was eighth Mark Gregory who is here today tied with the bowler you saw recently Rich Hallis Gary Carrington was uh, tied for 13th Charlie Jutra stick was in at number 16 didn't make the cut but he's out trying as well so you've got the top five high men and high women who've been paired up uh, corresponding high woman and high man uh, partnered and all the way down to the to fifth position. They don't roll off as teams. They're paired after yeah, their roll off. That's exactly right. Joanne with a nice 10 box. And box to box a 15 pin lead for Joanne and Rich. But Joanne now is up against a eighth frame strike from the team of Blanca and Steve. So without a mark. I don't uh, mean to correct your math, but that would be 16 pins. 16 pins. Isn't that what I said? You said 15 pins. You radio guys. <laughs> Joanne will miss the head pin and a half Worcester on the left side. So from a spread eagle on lane 34, she goes to a half Worcester on lane 33. Mike, of course, the star of the morning show on WZID FM which did a wonderful job this Christmas season in his charitable endeavors as they do every year under the great tutelage of general manager Ray Guerin and the terrific staff and uh, all of the things that go on during the holiday season and WZID is always at the forefront of the giving spirit of Christmas. Well, we, we thank you for those kind words. Thanks to everybody who uh, either donated items for the Christmases for Kids auction or that indeed uh, sent in a pledge. We uh, One of the, the packages we had, Dick, was uh, a chance for a couple of people to go to the One Life to Live set in New York to oh, watch really? the soap opera. Oh, wow. And that one, as I recall, got $5,700. Sure. There were people at the Mall of New Hampshire where we held the auction bidding against people who were on the phone. So it was it was quite a, a feeding frenzy yeah, at the end. Fun. 
So, uh, yeah, a lot of kids being helped throughout New Hampshire because of your generosity. Thank you. Steve Vadney working on the strike. He puts a spare on the strike with a great shot. And brings his team right back into the hunt. Watch that shot by Steve Vadney. It was not an easy shot, and he made the spare. So two marks in a row looking for bonus money here going into the 10th frame. That's the third mark of the string for Steven Blanca. On the spare, good first ball. Can he break up the split? No, but he's got favorable wood. Boy, that's great wood. $825 for uh, any team today that can get three strikes in a row. It's not been hit yet this season, so the money is going up every week. That's going to be good for the spare. That's $50 in bonus money for Vadne and Gacharna. They had $50 in bonus money in their win last week, plus another $50 for having the high string in the match. In addition to advancing to this week's match. On the spare, he'll put five as he missed the head pin. It's a 118 first string for Steve Vadney and Blanca Gacharna. Now Rich Clark. Needs a mark to make it close. Richie right on the head pin. Great pocket shot leaving the 10 pin. Rich, who came back from a serious eye injury a couple of years ago, makes the spare. Just missed the pocket shot. Rich, of course, is the farm manager for Clark Farms in Bedford, and he had an accident on the farm a couple of years ago that nearly cost him the sight of an eye. Will he make it? No. He'll put, he put seven in the spare. Going to be two three-pin difference here going into the next game. And a 10 box, a 116. So two pins separate these two teams as we head to the second string. It's Vadney and Gacharna leading by two over Clark and Rosano as we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Take a look at the highest officially sanctioned Candlepin bowling string at 245, bowled by Ralph Sem back in 1984. As you can see, count them, one, two, three, four, five strikes to begin the game. Not an open frame, not even a 10 box, all marks, including the end of the game with three spares in a row. Phenomenal, 245, that the plaque hangs at Community Lanes in Westfield, Mass. El Stron Strana, I believe, is who was good enough to bring it to us today. Kind of. The three, just the three in the last. Oh, I didn't even notice two. that. Wow. So that could have been, been a, a, a 250. Yeah, so. remarkable. So we're ready to go. Second string action here at wow. Lita Lane. Joanne Rosano will be first to bowl. A 245 for Ralph Sem. Will anyone ever come close to that? That's just really remarkable. But the thought that he was halfway to a 300 game when there's you, you take 12 strikes, he had the first six. Now that that's an everyday occurrence now in, in 10 pin bowling. It's still not easy to do, by the no, way. I don't Canada think you could just step up and do it as a 10-pin bowler. It's not that easy, but it happens every day. Joanne Rosano on lane 34. Gave it a run. The format for mixed doubles, the men lead off the first string, the women lead off the second string, and the teams choose which bowler will lead off the third string. Joanne will take a 10 box. Dick, I have some very good news for women bowlers that uh, might be listening. We get to see them for just four weeks every year, but uh, the folks here at Lita Lanes are putting together a 20 string tournament for women uh, next June. And it's going to be along the lines of the Easter Sunday tournament, which wow. is a big, big money tournament, $5,000 first prize. At now, least $5,000, in many cases more. Yes, that isn't necessarily what the prize money will be for the women because uh, there will not be as many bowlers. And, of course, to make that prize that high, you need to have you know people that, that can put the money, the entry fees in. So yet to be determined amount of money, but it looks like the first weekend in June, and we'll keep you posted. It'll be something to come down and watch or be a part of. If you're a, a woman bowler, this will be a first, a 20 stringer with some serious money at stake. That's great. There are some great women bowlers. Oh, there really are, and I'm sorry that we don't get to see them. 
as often as we really should. Joanne missed the spare. Now she's trying to pin as best she can. She takes a nine box. Well, Blanca Gacharna, to say the very least, has carried her weight, Dick. She had several spares last week. She had a strike today, figuring in heavily with the success of the team of Gacharna and Vadney. And a good first ball and there. A very good first ball, considering she missed the head pin. Cindy Colley and Mike Morgan, the team waiting in the wings is the number two seed to take on the winner of this match. And then Debbie Scandal and Chris Sargent, the number one seed. Blanca, will she oh. make it? Just missed that head pin. Remarkable bowler doing well. She has an average of 100. Doing a great job today. First time on TV, actually second week in a row now for her. And she'll continue to stay as long as she and Steve keep winning. But they'll have their hands full no matter what. This is a great team of Rosano and Clark, Cindy and Mike, as you pointed out, next week. Terrific team. And Debbie Scandal and Chris Sargent. A terrific team. Jane Robinson from Worcester sent me an email. Mike sent us an email. I've watched your bowling show as work permits. In the past couple of weeks, there's been a discussion concerning a bowling center in Jefferson, Mass, or the lack thereof. I know for a fact that indeed there was a small bowling center in Jefferson. I graduated in the 60s from Wachusa Regional High School in Holden and bowled several times in Jefferson. Directions to the bowling center are as follows. Go past the high school away from the center of Holden. On the left are some factories. On the right is the bowling center. If you get to the Holden Country Club, you've gone too far. It's now called Holden Hills Country Club. The bowling center is now an auto parts store. It's mm. a pleasure to watch your show, Jane Robinson, Worcester, Massachusetts. Now, I remember a Jefferson Lanes in Worcester but I don't remember the Jefferson Lanes in Holden. That would have been one of, what, about 20 bowling centers yep. at its peak in yep. Worcester. What, early 60s maybe, somewhere yep. in the 60s? Yep, absolutely. Oh, Rich has the 1710 here with a lot of wood on the deck. Just need to spray and pray. Oh, missed the head pin, and it would have gone, too. Our runner-up team today takes home $375. They'll split that. And the winners go on to face next week's team of Cindy Colley and Mike Morgan. Now looking for our first mark of this match. Rich Clark missed the head pin. Four horsemen right side plus the nine pin. Or the eight pin, rather. And the piece of wood in front of the eight pin will help it out. So the four horsemen key, the head pin key. And there it goes. That was a beautiful shot. First pair of the string from the team of Rick. Steve Vadney on lane 34. So there's two thirds of what Rich Clark just had. No 10 pin, it's the one and the seven with some wood. Out in front and then in between the one and the seven. Should go. There it goes. Nice shot by Steve Vadney. Played the wood perfectly. The ball took one, the wood took the other, and he has his team's first mark of the string. Right on the head pin again, breaks up the split. And another opportunity for a mark for Steve Vadney. Six in the 10, there's no wood. And he's got the mark, a couple of marks in a row. So as we go to the break, both teams are working on marks. When we come back, the Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Joanne Rosano is set to fill the mark left by Rich Clark. Just before the break, both teams working on marks. You are looking at the Candlepin Bowler of the Year. Not once, not twice, six times, Joanne Rosano. She holds the record for best or highest score for 50 strings, 62.98. She did that six, seven years ago and the best 60 string total at 75.06. Done the same year. Bowler of the year, six times, 23 WCBC titles. And a spare opportunity here as she puts eight in the Rich Clark spare. Not as easy as it looks. Yep, that's why. Wrapped it around. 
We saw her, well, last year she was the number two seed with Mike Morgan, defeated by Chris Sargent and Cindy Colley. So we've got some of the partners with, with different people this year, but a lot of the same players. And it'll be a nine box for Joanne. It's 55 half for Joanne and Rich. Again, like last week, Dick, a very close match. Regardless of what the averages are on paper or the qualifying scores, it's been very, very close. We made reference last week to a note that was sent to us by Robert Van Tichelt. Tichelt or Tichelt. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. It's not an easy name as Joanne makes the shot. Strike. Half of his letter dealt with the kingpin, which we made reference to last week, and the other half of the note was about Don Gillis responding to a question that we had a couple of weeks ago about that someone had asked how old would Don Gillis be, and he sent us in a copy of an article from the Wall Street Journal oh, really? from 1996 when the show left Channel 5, yep. and at the time it made reference to Don. Look and at her go. By Blanca. Bonus money. $50 additional bonus money. A great fill and a nice spare. But now she's up against a Joanne Rosano and Rich Clark strike. She threw a good first ball right on the head pin. She'll put six in the mark. And at the time this article was written in 1996, Don Gillis was 73. So he'd be 70. So he'd be 80 years old now. Wow. Just missed the object. Look pin. at that. She's going to take out the 10. Not quite. Not no. enough oomph. She's done a terrific job today. First time on TV. She uh, should be very pleased with her appearance. And a nine box. So our thanks to uh, Bob Van to Kelt or to Schelt from Stoneham, Massachusetts for his note and the article about Don Gillis. I think we were guessing he was around 80, yeah. right? You're always afraid to guess too high <laughs> for fear of insulting the person. Well, that's a tough leave for Rich Clark. He's got some wood in front of the four, seven, eight, and then the 10 all by itself over on the right-hand corner. Wow, that ball went flying to the right, just missed the, the uh, 10 pin. And a nine box for Rich. Right on the head pin again, can he break up the split? Can that? 10 pin go. It will not go. A lot of wood on the deck. Rich has kind of maneuvered the wood with his uh, with his hands from what 60 feet away. <laughs> not great wood, really. I, I got you got to play the left side of that wood. Hope the ball goes into the four pin and the pin goes into the 10 pin. That's what he tried to do, but it didn't do it. Didn't quite work out. Nope. All the armchair quarterbacks, of course, second-guessing the sure. shot selection there by Ridge Clark. Absolutely, they always do. That's it. That's part of the fun. 93 through 8 for the team of Rich Clark and Joanne Rosano. Now Steve Vadney. Steve right on the head pin. Can he strike? He will not. He'll leave a nine-pin leave with the three-pin standing. And that is a spare for Steve Vadney. Fourth mark of the string for the team of Vadney and Gacharna. Well, that's four marks in the last five boxes for these two. Now a chance to add some more pins because there is not a mark in the seventh or eighth boxes by Joanne and Rich. So a chance to really pick up some ground. Good first ball right on the head pin. A little too full. Just six in the spare. Tough shot here. Three, six, ten on the right, four on the left. He picks the three pin cleanly. And that will be a nine box. 
103 for Vadny and Gacharna. A 10 pin lead in this string to add to the two pin lead they had after one. So they lead the match by 12 pins right now. And the women will finish up now as the anchor bowlers in the ninth and 10 boxes. Joanna is a secretary at Metro Auto Industrial and she is a licensed hairstylist as well. Single and she enjoys darts as did Dean Gardner, our bowler from last week. Well, the wood here is interesting now as Joanne is going to let that, if that piece of wood rolls a little bit further, she might be inclined to play the wood and sweep the four horsemen left side with that piece of wood. Let's see how she goes at it. Is she going to go right at the pin or try to play the wood? Yes. She's going right at the pin. She left the head pin standing. I might have tried the wood. <laughs> But that's just second guessing. Yeah, well, that's 2020 yeah, hindsight, which is never wrong. Of course. But you, you can do it either way in many cases. There's usually more than one way to make these spares. Well, that's what, uh, I'm not sure that, that would have made the shot, but anyway, she gets a 10 box. Come on, Joe, go 103. So unless Joanne marks in this box the team of Vadney and Gacharna will have about a 12 pin lead going into the final string again depending on what uh, Black and Gacharna does in her final two boxes. Joanne right on the head pin. Cannot break up the split. Another tough shot. Same thing that Steve Vadney left his last time up on lane 33. 3, 6, 10 on the right. 4 on the left. Piece of wood next to the 4 pin which helps out a little bit. Gives you a little yep. room for error. If a pin sliding over can grab that piece of wood, it would take out the four pin. She got a shot at it. Nope. Little too full, so she just picks the three pin, which is just what Steve Vadney did. It'll be a seven box for Joanne and a 110 second string for Clark and Rosano. Blanca Gachana can really pad that lead with a mark or two here. Right on the head pin. The five pin goes, breaks up the split. She's been, she has an opportunity for yeah. a mark here. She's been hammering that head pin pretty well, Dick. I mean, this team is looking really good. Well, key here is to keep the ball on the alley. And she's going to make the spare. Blanca Gachana. The youngest and probably least experienced of all our bowlers today, and she has done a wonderful job. Fifth mark of the string for the team. Not going to have a big fill in the mark. She's going to put three in the spare. It's a makeable spare. Six, nine, and ten taken out. She's got the other seven. Yeah, she's right on the head pin. There it goes. Oh, my. And Blanca gives herself a hand after that one. <laughs> And she'll fill the spare to finish the string. 18 pins plus whatever she gets here, Dick, for a lead going into the third game. Blanca Gacharna. Remember that name, folks. Making her debut. Watch her make that spare. Now we'll watch her fill that spare. It's going to be off the head pin, too, and she's going to put four in the spare. And a 130 second string for the team of Steve Vadney and Blanca Gacharna. And a lead of 22 pins over Joanne Rosano and Steve and Rich Clark as we head to the third and final string from Lita Lanes in Nashville. We continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Steve Vadney will bowl first as the team of Vadney and Gacharna has determined that uh, Steve will lead off the third string. Keep it going, Steve. And they lead by 22 pins over Rich Clark and Joanne Rosano. Steve's first ball is off the head pin, but he gets a pretty good fall of uh, seven with the one three six still standing. No wood to help out. Just missed the spare, missed the head pin. When it left his hand, I think he thought he had it. So 
So it's a 10 box for Steve Vadney beginning game number three, string number three. 22 pin lead over Joanne and Rich. Not sure who they've determined will bowl first on that twosome. We'll find out here in just a moment. It's the team's choice. The men start the first string, the women start the second. The teams determine who will start the third. Got a note from Currier Smith of Concord, Massachusetts. Mike, he makes reference to the term sandbagging, which I think we, we used a couple of weeks ago. Or was used in some capacity and talking about the origination of that term, and he seems to think it's a poker term going from way back. Hmm. Well, thanks to the note for, from Currier Smith of Concord, Massachusetts. Nice to hear from you. He watches the show ever since I got cable and never miss it. Thanks, Mr. Smith. That newfangled cable. If you'd like to get in touch with us, there's the mailing address. WNDS-TV, 50 Television Place, Derry, 03038. Our email address, bowling at WNDS.com. We'd love to hear from you. Recent Nielsen ratings show that Candle Open Stars and Strikes continues to do extremely well in both the Saturday and Sunday time slots of noon to one, and we certainly appreciate your loyalty. And don't forget to tell your friends who have not been watching Candlepin Bowling that the bowling show is on every Saturday and Sunday at noon. Following the uh, show on Saturday, Dick, I've noticed that you're a part of a roundtable discussion. Yeah, Common Sense with Bill Carr. We have some great guests, uh, sometimes political, sometimes uh, business, sometimes recreation. A great rotation of guests, and I hope you'll watch. If you're watching this show on a Saturday, we'll be coming up next at 1 o'clock. And if you're watching on a Sunday, Arnie Arneson's political show is coming up at 1 o'clock. Arnie does a great job. And politics certainly are in vogue in New Hampshire. With the primary right around the corner. Blanca having a little difficulty with uh, some spare fills. 4-3 and now 2 on her last three attempts. She's otherwise been pretty good right on the head pin today. That one got away from her. And it's going to be a three box. Okay, it's tough. Right so a two pin fill in the spare and a three box for Blanca Gacharna. You can tell that it's bothering her. She's got to let it fall from her mind. And that one is off the head pin, too. Getting the encouragement from the crowd. Well, everybody wants to see a first time bowler do well. And again, she's off the head pin, so struggling to find that head pin. Blanca Gachana from Chelsea, Massachusetts. Been bowling for 15 years. And that's a good that's third ball. That's much better. There you go. But not Still much to show it. for it, a six box. So Joanne Rosano with a chance to make up some ground right here. Just nine pins and two boxes for Blanca Gachana. And Joanne can eat at some of that lead. Well, they could really essentially uh, close the gap here with a couple of spares. But spares have been at a premium for practically everybody today. Well, the uh, Bad Nigatrana team had six marks in the second string. Yeah, that's true. They had no shortage of spares, did they? Well, there's the four horsemen with the five and the eight behind. Not an easy shot. No. Because you've got uh, you've got double double wood. Nice shot. She put it right in the right spot, but was so, not able to convert. So she has seven. She'll pick up at least four pins. But it could have been a lot worse for uh, Blanca and Steve. She's just trying to pin right now. And that will be a nine box for Joanne. 
So she picks up six pins in that box, and she's up against the six box here. Crowd favorite Mike Morgan and his partner Cindy Colley are here next week, taking on the winner of today's match. Two weeks from today, Debbie Scandal and Chris Sargent will be here at Lita Lanes. Hope you'll join us for the final week. Fifteen hundred dollars, the top prize to be split with the winning team. Joanne crossing over to the Brooklyn side. You've got the three, the five, the six, and the ten. Piece of wood off to the left. Don't believe it's a factor. But an opportunity here for Joanne. Back in the old Channel Five days, uh, she had a, a run of ten weeks in a row, Dick, where she was on, and that's the format where you stayed on until you lost. That's a nice spare for Joanne going into the break. That tightens things up quite a bit. As we reach the halfway point of this match, we're coming right back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Steve Badney steps to lane 34 at Lita Lanes in Nashua as we welcome you back to Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. Steve Badney right on the head pin, spread eagle plus one. You've got the nine pin behind the three pin. You've got the two, four, seven on the left, the three, the six, the nine, and the ten on the right. And he takes off four of them. I want to mention, Dick, the fourth WCBC Pro Bowlers Tour will be held in Webster in January at Mohegan Lanes. It's the tournament dedicated every year to the memory of Hall of Famer Stacia Zernike. It's also an invitational. All bowlers are welcome to come out and bowl with the pros. Men must hold a league average of 112 or better, and the ladies 102 or higher. The cost is $100. For more information, you can call tournament director Dottie Lawrick. Her number in New Hampshire is area code 603-888-5592. That's a January tournament. There is none during December because of all the busy activities that uh, everybody has. So the fourth... Uh, Tournament of the season will be in, in honor, as it is every year, of the late Stacia Zernike. Funny that you mentioned uh, the tournament being Webster as Steve miss, misses the spare. Jack Kelly sends us a note. This is an old article, but it hasn't been talked about this season. We hadn't talked about Webster Lake all year thus far. Do we have to? We've, we've we can't go into season this without point, that. But you mentioned Webster, yeah. and here's the lake. You want to give it a shot? No, I do not. All right. Just put it in the file. We don't have enough time for the rest of the show for me to try to figure out how to say that. Just call it Webster Lake. Thank you. A couple of tens for Blanca and Steve. So Joanne and Rich now have a great opportunity to uh, climb back into the lead with at least a mark. Oh, no. Missed the head pin. He throws such a live ball, he gets a Boy, lot of action does, huh? after, after contact. Bounce that one down, hit the head pin, and he looks down. He doesn't believe they're still standing. He wants to know how that is possible. And that will be an eight box for Rich Clark. Our director today is Kevin LaFawn. Nelsie Batiste is on graphics. Jonathan Barraza is on replay. Alex Kalisov's handling, handling audio. Keith Webb is our engineer. Kevin Sheehan, Larry Haber, and David Lawyer are manning the cameras as Rich Clark grabs a strike, and you get to watch it because of the fine work of our crew that makes it possible for you to watch the best Candlepin bowlers in the world each and every week on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and you saw the Rich Clark strike and replay right there. And here's Blanca Gacharna. Right on the head pin. There, she found the head pin again. Can she make the strike? The eight pin is still standing. This match is for all practical purposes even with the strike from Rich Clark in the sixth. And now Blanca can keep the pressure on with a spare. Will she make it? She will. She makes the spare. Good recovery by Blanca after a couple of disappointing boxes where she had a three and a six. She throws a good first ball, makes the spare, and now an opportunity to fill the spare. And switch the momentum back to her side. Uh, she threw it off the head pin, and she's only going to put three in the spare. That's been a real problem area for Blanca. She's got a good shot. Oh, it took a right turn, didn't it? Didn't that ball take a right turn when it left her hand? Must have had a little backspin yeah. on it. It looked, as it left her hand, that it was going to be right at the head pin, but it backed off. 
And that's the same thing. Oh, oh a free my. box. That's a tough one. So the spare, a three pin fill in the spare and a three box for Blanca. And now Joanne Rosano, a chance to really bring her team all the way back. She's working on the Rich Clark strike. pocket can she break up the split no well it was a great pocket hit too right in the one three and you've got the eight and the ten with a piece of wood what do you figure Michael anybody can make it she can hit it around the stripe maybe and hope it uh, oh, deflects off oh, that's she tried to play the wood into the pin and hope the ball would take the eight pin. And in fact, she got neither. Well, they pick up eight pins now in the sixth frame. And they will actually lose ground in the seventh frame because of the spare from yep. Blanca. It's a nine box. Now she's up against a three box. Mark evens things up right here. Anybody's game. Steve Vadney will uh, finish off for the men, Rich Clark, uh, for his respective team as well. Well, if Joanne gets a 10 box right here, the match would be even. Yeah. Be an exciting finish for sure. <laughs> Missing the head. He has a tough shot here. The one, the nine, and the 10 with no wood to help out. This one is not easy. Now, as you say, there, there is no wood to help out. Well, she used that wood on the left after the fact. Nope, she threw it away. She turned back immediately. So this match will probably be in favor of uh, Vadney and, and Kacharna. Going down to the last in couple the last, of boxes. Yeah, by yep. just a pin or two. Unless uh, Joanne actually can make this. She's going to take one of them. So an eight box. And it's a two-pin lead for Blanca Gachana and Steve Vadney over Joanne Rosano and Rich Clark with two boxes remaining. Exciting finish like last week. Just like last week. When Steve was the hero in the ninth and tenth. Two pins separate these teams. Here we go. Steve Vadney. A thin hit on the head pin. And look at those pins fall. Huh. My goodness gracious. It looked for a moment as though he were going to have about eight still standing <laughs> after hitting did. the head pin. This still is not a given, however. Do it. There it goes. Whoa. It took a while, but it went. The so there for Steve Vadney. The pressure stays on Rosano and Clark with a great shot from Steve Vadney in the ninth box. You're going to have to mark for sure. Good first ball. There they go. And that's what your anchor man is there for. They can't lose now unless Joanne and Rich put a double in there. If, if he doesn't, I mean, he can get a spare here and, and force them to double. So pin count is very critical here. Good first ball again and another strike. $50 in bonus money. And one more ball and an opportunity for $825 in the triple strike jackpot if you have not been paying attention. Oh my. This is an $825 shot all of a sudden for Steve Badney. Can he put it in the bank? No, he missed the head pin. But the damage is done. It's a makeable spare, but a double strike will be needed. And 
and it's going to be a 10 box. That's it. They cannot win. Nope. The match is over. So we will come back to wrap it up right after this when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashville for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. There you see the final score, 359 for the team of Blanca Gacharna and Steve Vadney to 331 for Joanne Rosano and Rich Clark. In the interest of time, we're going to go right to the bonus ball contest. Mike Morin will draw a card out of the bin, and Steve Vadney will try to match him up with a winner at home. $50 in the bonus ball jackpot right now. Rose Maloney of Pittsburgh, Massachusetts. She wants you to get a six, Steve, so go for it. Steve Badney will try to get a six and will try to give away some cash. It's not going to be a six. It's going to be a three. It's a consolation prize from NNR Trophies of Winchin in Massachusetts. Cindy Colley and Mike Morgan next week. We'll see you next time. For everybody from Mike Morgan and our crew, I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time on Candleton Stars and Strikes. So long.